Okay, welcome to the cash flow builder webinar and I am excited for you to be here today. Thank you for joining us. So just for those of you that are on the uh, zoom aspect of the call, we okay, are streaming to on the cash flow builder webinar Hang on, we've got feedback. Okay. Uh, so those of you that are on the Zoom call, we are streaming on Facebook at the moment, but we are going to stop that stream when we get to the end so that uh, we can then do any question and answer session on the Zoom call. Okay, so let's jump straight in. Uh, well, I know you're halfway through your Friday if you're on the East Coast and just getting your day started on the West Coast. So we're going to be about half an hour on here just to give you uh, a time frame. And I'm excited to be able to share with you about Profit First. Okay, so let's jump straight in. Okay, so here is our agenda for today. So we are going to do an overflow of cash flow management, we're going to do an introduction to profit first, uh, we're going to look at the implementation steps, what the benefits are of profit first, cash flow, everyone's favorite topic, and do a Q&A session at the end. Okay, so cash flow management, so, you know, what is that? It's one of those aspects of the business that not a lot of people enjoy doing. It's something that stresses them out. And so we just want to kind of you know, figure out you know, what is cash flow management. So we're talking about the process by which uh, a business plans, controls, monitors its cash coming in and going out of the business. So that's what all it's about. It's the cash flow in and out of the business. And the objective of having cash flow management in your business is to make sure that your organization um, you know, it, uh, maintains adequate cash reserves. We want to make sure it's meeting all of their expenses, you know, making them sure they can meet their short term debt obligations and then also um, avoiding excess cash as well. So that's the other thing. We're not just talking about a shortage of cash. We're talking about making sure that you, know, you don't have too much cash sitting there that could be used better elsewhere. So you have to understand them, how the money flows into your business, you know, whether you're know, coming from your customers and your clients, and then how it flows out of your business as well. So the money that's paying your expenses, investments, debt repayments, uh, you know, all of those aspects of the business. But it's not just the money coming in and out. It's the timing of that money. How does that money come in and out throughout the month? Analysis, you know, and analyzing how this all happens, what makes it tick, what keeps you, you know, in a positive cash flow status. And then forecasting as well. So looking ahead, not having any of those you know, unexpected surprises uh, that suddenly crop up like, oh, shoot, I don't have enough money for payroll. So there's all those different aspects when we're talking about cash flow management. Effective cash flow management means that you are helping your business to avoid that negative cash flow aspect of it. We want to make sure that we're maintaining liquidity. And ultimately, we're going to ensure then you've got an ongoing, strong, viable business as well. And that's crucial for the growth of your business even more so for small businesses, you know, maybe that you don't have that substantial reserve that can get you through those negative times. So that's why it's even more critical that you know exactly where your business stands. So we're gonna cover some more um, aspects like that later on. Okay, so profit first. So for those of you that know me that have followed me on Facebook for a while, you know that I am very passionate about profit first. It is something that I have been involved with for about eight years now. And it is just something that is a game changer for your business. So that's why I teach a webinar on Profit First every month, because it is so critical to the su success of your business. So what is Profit First? So it's all about, like it says, taking your profit first. Think about your profit and loss statement. Where does that profit line appear? Right at the end of that report, way down the bottom. You've got your revenue at the top, then you've got your expenses, and then you have the profit at the bottom. And profit shouldn't be something that is the last thing you think about. It shouldn't be a case of you know, crossing your fingers, hoping and praying you're going to make money this month. It needs to be a priority in your business. You have to be focusing on making money, making a profit. Everybody gets so caught up in making revenue. And yes, revenue is important. That's what keeps your business you know, going. But you know, revenue is great. But if your expenses are eating up into all of that revenue and you don't have any profit left, then that's a lot of time, blood, sweat, tears, and hard effort putting into that not to make anything. So that's why you know, we're wanting to talk about profit as being the focus in your business. Yes, you need that revenue to make that profit. So it, it's important. We're not saying it's not, but you have to start focusing on the profit as an aspect to the success of your business. 
if you think about sort of sales meetings, people are very quick to start, you know, boasting about their revenue. Yeah, we hit 2 million last year. Yeah, we did 10 million. Yeah, we're on track to do 5 million. Everybody gets so excited about talking about their revenue numbers, but nobody ever talks about their profit numbers. And if you were with us on the last webinar, you remember the example that I showed you about either a $50 million company or a $5 million company as to which one you would rather prefer own. And of course, if you're looking at revenue, yeah, I'll take a $50 million revenue business. But if you start then looking at the profit of those two businesses and you see that the $5 million business is making more profit than the $50 million business, all of a sudden that five if that $50 million business doesn't look quite so attractive. And so that's why the profit is the most important aspect. So you have to make sure you have a profitable business at the end of the day. So Mike, McC uh, Mike McCallowitz is the author of Profit First. He is the one that developed this system. And if you haven't read the book, uh, I highly encourage you to you know, jump on Amazon, um, you know, get a copy of it. The audible version is awesome as well. I love how Mike reads his books because he puts so much um, you know, feeling into it because obviously he's lived it. Um, but not only that, you've got a lot of little extra uh, bits that he adds in as well. But Mike went through uh, the process of opening a business, selling business, opening businesses, being super, super successful, and then sold his businesses, made a huge amount of money and lost it all. And so that is, you know, the aspect that kind of, you know, drove Mike to that point of having to do something different, of having to make a change, of having to make sure that, you know, from now on, profit becomes the focus of his business. And if you haven't read the book, like I said, I highly encourage you to read it. So we're just going to look quickly about the four core principles. And again, read the book, go find our webinar from last month. Um, if you'd like us to send you a copy of that, then put a note in the chat uh, or comment on Facebook and one of my team will get that to you. So the four core principles are the first one is small plates. And so you're probably thinking, like, what are we talking about small plates for? We're talking about money here. So part of that is from Mike when he was going through this you know, depression from you know, losing everything, losing his house. That he was then staying up late watching infomercials. And one of those infomercials one night was talking about losing weight. And as he was listening to it, he suddenly came to this realization of how this relates to business as well. Many businesses operate with one bank account, operating expenses, all the money goes into that bank account, all the money comes out of that bank account, and that's it. There's no other bank account except that one account. And so people get you know, very disillusioned in that, like, oh my gosh, look at all that money that I have. And then, you know, they sort of think, oh, well, I could go buy this truck now, or I can do this, or I can do that, forgetting that, oh, I have rent due in two weeks, payroll's due next week. Did that vendor check clear or not? There's so many different aspects that go into the story behind that bank balance that you don't necessarily see when you are just looking at your phone. And guarantee that all of you have your cell phone sitting right next to you on your computer if you're not watching this on your phone. It's right with us the whole time. And it allows us to be able to check our bank balances as many times during the day as we want to, which can be good, but can be bad. But instead of Mike trying to tell us like, quit checking your bank balance, just you know, go buy what your QuickBooks file is telling you, he leveraged the behavior, they leveraged that habit of what we have of checking our phones. So small place basically is an example of different bank accounts. Mike recommends that we have five bank accounts, your income account, profit, owner's pay, tax, and operating expenses. And when you have those small plates, those, extra, those five different bank accounts, and you separate the money into those smaller portions, because when you lose weight, what do you have to do? You have to eat less. So they say put you know, the food, say the amount of food that you have to eat on a smaller plate still looks like a good sized portion. Same thing when you're moving that money around, you still have you know, the money there, but you've now told the money what its purpose is for. And that's the big difference. You're allocating the money. And that's the second aspect of the, one of the core principles is the allocation aspect. So your money flows into the income account. And then we've predetermined percentages, which are in the book as well. You're then going to transfer money to your profit account first, because we're talking about profit first. Then owners pay because you are the most important person in your business and you need to pay yourself. Taxes, IRS wants their money too. And then operating expenses. So operating expenses is last for a reason because that's where you have to then decide what expenses do you need and what expenses do you need to reduce in order to be able to uh, you know, make, you know, keep your business going but not make a loss. And then the third core principle is removing temptation. So again, human habit, if you look, log into your bank account, you see all your bank accounts here listed and you're like, oh, 
I've got 5,000 in my profit account. Oh, I, I've got like 6,000 in my tax account. Maybe I could go get something with that. And then you start spending money that isn't even supposed to be spent on those kinds of expenses. Your profit is your profit. It's there for you as the business owner. Your taxes are there to pay the taxes that you're going to make on the profit. And so you want to make sure that you've got to have this out of sight, out of mind concept. And so what Mike recommends in the book is to have hold accounts for your profit account and your tax account. So what does that mean? That means opening up another profit account and another tax bank account in a separate bank. No online access, no checkbook, no debit card. Out of sight, out of mind. And so that way, then you're moving the money from your income account to your profit and your tax. And then you're moving it from your profit and your tax accounts then to your hold accounts. That way you're not seeing that money there. It's not there. It's allocated. You're not spending it on the operating expenses of the business. And then the fourth core principle is rhythm. So Mike in the book talks about the 1025 rhythm, and that's about making your allocation transfers on the 10th of the month and the 25th of the month. And then also paying your bills on the 10th and the 25th. And the reason he recommends this is because it enables you to see the ebbs and flows of the money in your business. So that way you can see, okay, what's the pattern? Like, okay, I always see that the third month is, the third week of the month is always tight. Maybe the first week of the month is great, but it allows you to see how the money flows in and out of your business that then helps you to make informed financial decisions as to, you know, when you need to maybe be paying bills and not paying bills and just, you know, getting your cash flow in order. Some people don't like that 1025 rule, and I'm actually one of them that does not follow that rule. One of the things with Profit First that's so great is it's not something that has to be set in stone to make it work. Yes, you need to follow the core principles, so you have to have a rhythm. But what I do with my business and what many of our clients do with their Profit First aspect is do it weekly. So on a Monday morning, we look at the deposits that are in the income account from the previous week, and then we make the transfers into those allocation accounts accordingly. Following Monday, then we do the same thing again. So it's up to you what that rhythm is. I do, don't suggest you do it every time you have a deposit into your bank account. You will drive yourself crazy and you will drive your bookkeeper crazy with all the transfers. So once a week is a good place to get into. So talking about now paying yourself first. So profit first is the first aspect. And then paying yourself as well is critical. You are the most important person in your business. If you're not there, your business is not necessarily operating if you're just starting out. You've put in so many hours into the business. You've put risk into the business by starting the business in the first place. Maybe you left a really good paying job to start this business. So you need to be paying yourself. And if you started this business and you have a spouse and you have a family, they need for you to pay yourself as well. You don't want to be racking up credit card debt personally just to keep your business going because you're not paying yourself. So you've got to have that element. And if you put that in from day one, it makes it a whole lot easier. So you're probably thinking like, well, Gosh, do I really need all those different bank accounts? You need those five that we just talked about as a minimum. I actually have, I think, 12 bank accounts now for my business. And the reason we have the different accounts, like I said, is telling every single dollar in your business what that money is to be used for. So for example, I've got the five we talked about above, but I also have a payroll account. I have a team of five people. So I have to make sure that they get paid every, every other week, like our payroll schedule, because I'm helping them support their families. That's my responsibility to make sure I have those funds to pay my team. So I have a payroll account. If you are selling um, a product and you have to pay sales tax, then I highly suggest that you get a, you set up a sales tax bank account as well. When you receive that, that money from your customers, that is not your money. You are just holding that money and then paying it to the Department of Revenue. So don't be spending that. Whenever you get a deposit in and you're doing your transfers, look to see what portion of that is your sales tax and put that into a separate account and then do your allocation transfers after that. Other accounts you might have, um, you know, for us, we have an equipment account. My team use laptops. Laptops only last so long. So I have an account with funds in it, saving up every month. So when I need to replace a laptop, I just go use the funds, buy a laptop, done. Not getting into credit card debt. Uh, another account we have is for travel and conferences. Uh, as a company, we travel to different conferences throughout the year. So we have flights, we have tickets, we have food, we have hotels, and I'm putting money aside to pay for that throughout the year. So you can probably take a look at your own business and figure out what other bank accounts would help you as well. I think Mike and Ron at Profit First Professionals have about 17 to, tw 17 to 20 bank accounts. So there is a lot of room there you know, to be able to grow, but do what you need. Don't 
create bank accounts for the sake of creating bank accounts. Make sure every single one has a defined purpose. Okay, I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you, so just hold tight. Uh, you know, so hopefully you're taking notes. It really is a game changer for your business, and hopefully you can see just from what we covered so far how it can really help you. So let's talk about now, you know, implementing profit first. There's a lot of different aspects of it, but the first thing you need to do is to, you know, open your bank account. So, you know, look at your financial situation first. Look at how it's sitting, figuring out like, okay, this really isn't working having this one bank account. I need to separate out my funds. I need to do the profit first way to help me get a better understanding of my cash flow and my cash position. So look at that, your, your situation first, figure out, okay, on top of the five bank accounts, what other bank accounts would be helpful for my business? Then go and set up your bank accounts. Now, you really need to find a bank account that a bank that is not going to charge you horrendous monthly fees. I was with a bank that I was paying about 60 to 70 dollars of fees per month. And I go to the point like I'm done with this. This is ridiculous. So I have just started um, about probably six months ago. I opened up my accounts with Relay Financial and they're actually the um, bank that has partnered with Profit First as well. So that is the bank that we recommend. There are no monthly fees with Relay. They have a great online platform. It's easy to use. You can have your debit cards, you can put in spending limits, you can move money easily, and it just makes a whole lot more sense. So get your bank accounts open. Once you have your business set up on Relay, it literally takes 30 seconds to open up a bank account. So you know, get that started. And if you need an introduction to Relay, then please let us know and I can make that introduction for you. So then determining the appropriate allocations. So this is where you wanted to do the instant assessment. And Mike talks about this in the book as well. And there's a table in there that lets you know what the percentages should be going to each bank account, depending on the amount of revenue you are making in your business. So refer to that table, look to see where you're at, look to see you know, what the percentages are, and then that's those percentages that you need to be building up to. And so don't just keep putting it off. Don't keep thinking, I'm just gonna do it next time. I'm gonna do it next month. I'll start next year. I'm gonna start January 1. Just start now, even if you're transferring 1%, that's 1% in your profit account that you didn't have last month. You know, and that's what we're talking about is just do it in baby steps. Don't feel you have to go right straight 15% in tax account. Like, okay, I've just got to do it. No, do it in baby steps. Get your business to that place where it can get to that 15%, but it's not necessarily going to happen today. And that's okay. You want to implement it gradually. You want to have it you know, implemented with confidence so that you keep doing this. And then you want to make sure that you're monitoring and adjusting, adjusting those allocations as well. So as you grow and maybe you cross that threshold from 250,000, now you're doing 300,000, now your percentages change. So make sure you've got that table in the book bookmarked so that you can go back and see what those percentages need to change to as you grow your business. So that's about implementing it. It's, it's getting it done. It's so easy to procrastinate on something like this, but it really is one of those aspects that once you get it going, it's the best thing that you can do for your business. So what are the benefits of Profit First? Hopefully us going through so far, you can see what those benefits are. You've definitely gotten an improvement in your cash flow management because you're telling your money where it's going to go. You're telling it what it's going to be used for. There's times when I look at my operating account and think, oh my gosh, like, why is that so low? And then I'm like, no, it's so low because I've put the money into other bank accounts that, for what its purpose is. And there's not a lot left then to go out of my operating account. So it's one of those things where you just get a better hold on everything because you can look at all the different bank accounts. And again, Relay has a great on-screen um, you know, view that you can see all your different bank accounts, all the balances right in one view, and then you can you know, move the money as needed. There's definitely a reduced financial stress. There's such a great feeling for me as a business owner when it comes to run my payroll, I'm not looking at like, oh, do I have enough money in my operating account? I don't have to worry about that because I've already put that money into my payroll account at the beginning of the month. You know, we are a subscription-based business and so our, all our funds come in at the beginning of the month and so everything gets allocated there and then. And so I know my payroll account has the money in to run both payrolls for that month. So that's just one area that really reduces the financial stress on me as a business owner. And so it definitely has that impact on you as well. So enhanced financial stability. So what do we mean by that? It just means, again, you have control of your money. You're thinking ahead. You're not just kind of having this guessing game. You're not seeing how much money is in your bank account and hoping it's going to work out. You've planned it out. You've 
already thought about how did your money have to be spent? And that's just a huge you know, peace of mind aspect in that as well. Increase profitability. So you're increasing your profit because we are going to have to be reducing your expenses. There's not very many businesses out there that we work with where we're like, okay, great, you're doing everything perfect. We don't need to change a thing. 99.9% .9 of businesses need to reduce their expenses. And so that's what we do in our clients. We help them to go through, ask the hard questions and look to see where we can reduce their expenses. And in turn, that obviously increases their profitability. And then it can help you, you know, sustain your business longer because you're making money. You have to make money to stay in business or you're just going to end up pouring loads of personal funds into it and getting yourself into a horrible situation personally. So you don't want to do that. You need to be profitable. And then the ability to make data-driven decisions. When you can see where your money is at, how much money you have, or maybe how much money you don't have, then you can make those informed financial decisions with what I like to call them. You can see that, okay, I've got this data. This is what my business is telling me. This is what my bank accounts are at. These are what my expenses are. Okay, right. Now I can make an informed decision as to what I need to do to improve that financial situation. Okay, so I just realized I did not share one of the most important parts of Profit First. So we talked about the allocations. We talked about, uh, you know, being able to tell your dollar, you know, every dollar where it's going to be used for. But the, one of the best things about Profit First is the quarterly bonus. I can't believe I forgot to talk about that. So at the end of every quarter, you take a profit bonus from that profit account. And you're going to take 50% as to what is in there. Not the whole thing. You're not going to wipe it out. You're going to take just 50% of that. And that's your profit bonus to you as the owner. Now, if you want to share that with your team, you can. Uh, many businesses will take 20% of that bonus and share it with their team. And then the owner will take the other 80%. But again, that's the 20% of the 50% that you took out of the business. And so, you know, that aspect of, you know, of taking a profit bonus is such a great feeling that, okay, good, I'm making money. I'm seeing the benefit of having this business. I can see that it's worth all these hours that I'm putting into it. So that aspect is just a really, really great feeling. So taking your profit first, giving yourself a profit bonus. I love the end of every quarter, being able to bless my team and being able to take a bonus myself as well. So there's various cash flow stresses that come. So we're kind of like moving you know, away from profit first directly and just talking about different aspects that can be um, you know, stressful in a business. And some of these you know, are related to construction and some of them, these are related to every business. So first we're gonna talk about delayed payments. So it's quite common you know, in a lot of industries and particularly construction in um, experiencing delays and receiving payments from your customers. And that can make cash flow really, really challenging. And then it makes it hard then to pay bills and you don't know where you're at with it. So when you've got delayed payments, you have to make sure that you have a plan in place to be able to still pay those people that you need to. In construction and other industries, you can sometimes get unanticipated project costs because right, everything in life does not go perfectly to plan and straightforward. There's things that come up, there's things that happen, there's unexpected costs, unexpected problems, and you have to make sure that you are tracking all of those. So if you've got maybe an increase in price in the material, maybe additional material was needed, additional work was added, you've got to make sure that you're tracking all of that. You've got to make sure that you know exactly what is going on in that job so that you can then make those changes accordingly and invoice those. And then that leads on to change orders. So change orders happen in construction all the time. I, can't, I worked in construction for six years. And I don't remember one project that we had that did not have a change order on it. It happens on every project. And so this might be for additional material, additional time, maybe you know, you've had to um, you know, extend the job because you know, another aspect was added. There's a lot of different things that go into that. So you have to make sure you're tracking all of that and issue those change orders accordingly. So seasonality. So this is something that can affect many different businesses, you know, depending on where you live in the country. You know, if you're dealing with you know, the crazy heat in the south in the summertime, you're dealing with the crazy cold in the north in the wintertime, you may be dealing with seasonality in your business. And that's one of the areas that um, Profit First can really help as well, because we have in the advanced um, training in Profit First what we call a drip account. So a drip account is where we're saving money throughout the year in preparation for that quiet time. So if you know that November, December, January, you're gonna do very little work, maybe even February, because there's gonna be you know, four feet of snow on the ground, then you are planning for that throughout the year. So when it comes to those times when your revenue coming in significantly decreases, you've still got that money that you drip back into the business operating account to then pay for those bills. 
So the drip account is a really, really great aspect of Profit First that can really help you. Okay, number five, so retainage. This obviously does relate to um, construction. Um, if you're doing residential work, then that's something that you may not be dealing with. If you're dealing with commercial projects, then there's a very good chance that you're having 10% of your project retained until the very end of the job is completed. So this can really lead to cash flow problems as well. So again, if you know where your finances are at, if you know your numbers, if you've got your money allocated accordingly, then this can really help you just stay ahead of the game on that. Okay, equipment maintenance and replacement. So this can apply to every single business. We're not just necessarily talking about you know, JCBs, you know, dump trucks. This can be talking about you know, desks, you know, office machinery, you know, anything like that that you have in your business. Like I talk with laptops in my business. So you're always gonna have equipment of some sort. Maybe you've got vehicles that have to be maintained. They're gonna have to be replaced down the road. You know, maybe you have some machinery or office equipment that has to be upgraded from time to time. So one of the aspects as well as profit first is, you know, like we talked about the drip account, you can have an equipment maintenance account as well. So you've got money that you are putting aside every single time you're making those transfers in anticipation of some of an expense like that coming up because it's going to come up, you know, it's, and even if you don't need it that year, it's going to happen the next year. So don't think that, oh, we didn't need it this year. I'm just going to you know take the money out of that. Keep the money there, let it build up because at some point, something is gonna to need to be replaced. Something is gonna to need to be repaired. So get ahead of the game. Inefficient invoicing. So again, something that can be seen in every single industry that, that invoices their customers. You have to make sure you have a great system and process in place for your customers getting invoiced, excuse me. You don't wanna be waiting till the end of the week or the end of the month and doing your invoicing if a job is being completed a lot earlier in that week or that month. Get your invoices out. The sooner you get them out, the sooner you are going to get paid. Also, the longer you wait on something, maybe you know there's gonna be an inaccuracy in it because somebody you know, you know, forgot about something and it needed to be added. So these have huge impacts on cash flow if you're not invoicing efficiently and getting that invoicing out on time with clear payment terms. Okay, number eight, lack of financial planning. So if you're not budgeting, you know, if you're doing um, construction and you're not doing, you know, proper estimating, and if you're not financially looking ahead, then you're going to end up with cash flow issues and they're going to happen really, really quickly. So make sure that you've got a budget in place. You know, where is it that you're aiming to be for this year? What is it that you need to be looking at? If you're in construction, you're estimating, you know, are you comparing your um, estimate to what your actual costs ended up being on the job? Are you accurate in your estimating? Like, are you on point most of the time or always, you know, or are you always below or over? You've got to make sure you know where you are in that because there's the times then that you need to learn from that and then improve the way you're estimating so that you can get better and make sure that you are making money on every single job. And the last two as well can relate to any industry as well. So high overhead costs. So, uh, you know, insurance, you know, I keep hearing from a lot of people how their insurance has gone up. Uh, rent has gone up, utilities have gone up, and there's just a lot of different operational expenses that can really drain cash flow really quickly. So again, that's having that control over that, making sure you're aware of exactly what's going on, and then allocating funds accordingly. So don't just kind of let that go on and on. Maybe you need to you know, shop around for different insurance, you know, get you know, with a different brokerage and get them to start looking for new insurance. Maybe you need to talk to your landlord about, uh, you know, talking about, you know, your rental, um, your rent agreement and seeing if you can get a change on that. Or maybe it's time to move to a different space. You know, who knows? It's going to be different for every business. But just make sure that you are aware when those costs are increasing so that you can make sure that, you know, you can do something different if needed. And then finally, labor costs. So cost of labor can always be a significant issue for any single business. And then when you start talking overtime, um, you know, that's just when things can get really out of control. So again, make sure you've got those systems in place, those processes that people can't just do overtime for the sake of it. Because I'm like, oh, I'm just going to get 10 hours overtime this week. Make sure that overtime has to be approved and authorized. Make sure you've got everything written up that all your team know that you can't just work extra when you want to, when you feel like it. You've got to make sure that you have that authorized and approved and that it's okay. And that that way the business can afford to pay it without impacting cash flow. Okay, so that was a lot of information there. But again, cash flow is such an important part of the business. It's, it's the lifeblood of the business. And you have to make sure that you've got your hands around it. So what are your tips for success? So you've got to be disciplined and you've got to be consistent. One of the things that Mike talks about is profit is a habit. It is not an event. I'm going to say that again. Profit is a habit. It's not an event. 
that is really, really significant because you should just be making a profit. It should just be a habit. That's what you do. That's how your business operates. It shouldn't be something that oh, happened this month. Oh, didn't happen this month. Oh, happened next month. It needs to be happening every single month. You need to be regularly reviewing and adjusting your allocations, looking at your expenses. You're looking at everything. Don't just be looking at stuff once a year. You need to be looking at your financial statements every single month. You need to know how your business is performing. You need to know that you have accurate information and you need to be able to trust that so you can then make those informed financial decisions and keep growing your business. If you're struggling with that, then maybe you need to seek professional guidance and accountability. One of the big aspects of Profit First, you know, the success of Profit First is the accountability aspect. That is when you know, you've got somebody that's holding your hand, that's guiding you, that's walking you through and making sure that those transfers are being done, answering your questions when you need it. And so make sure that you know, if you're not sure as to how that Profit First system works, or you've got questions, seek out someone that can help you. And then lastly, have a financial system in place. You need to have you know, something like QuickBooks, a software that is keeping track of all your money coming in, all the money going out, and just make sure that you know exactly how your business is operating. Well, our tagline at Abacus is to know, understand, and trust your numbers. So that's just a really critical aspect of this, making sure you know exactly where your business is at. Okay, so what do you do next? You know, you've listened to this webinar, you've listened to how Profit First can be a game changer for your business. I'm sure you're already starting to think about like, yeah, okay, I can see how this could help my business. Like, oh yes, that would be huge. That would be really great. Let's do that. So you have to decide that now is the time to make that change. You don't want to just keep putting it off. You have to decide if this is going to be something you want to implement in your business. You have to be committed to increasing your profitability. It's not just a case of like, yeah, I'd, I'd like to make more profit. That would be good. You have to be committed to doing that. And so the next step would be is to sign up for our Profit First Fast Track program. So that is designed to help you go through the program in 12 weeks and help you to understand exactly what it takes to take your profit first, get it implemented and stick to it. So don't keep procrastinating. Make today the day that you start taking your profit first. So our Profit First Fast Track is a program that's 12 weeks of bi-weekly one-to-one Zoom calls with myself, and we walk you through the Profit First. We dive in a lot deeper than we have done today, and we help you to get the whole system set up. We help you to implement it. We go through all the expenses. We just go through the whole system. We teach the advanced aspects as well to help you take the next step in your business. With that, step-by-step -step answering your questions, you're going to get a free copy of the Profit First book. We will do a full profit first assessment on your business. So we're going to take your QuickBooks file, take your PL, your balance sheet, and we're going to run a full assessment on that to see exactly where you're at, where you need to be at. And then we're going to create a custom rollout plan in order to get you to that point. You'll get Voxer access for those three months as well. So if you have a question, you want to send me a message, you've got Voxer access direct to me to help you through that. And then you get the profit first workbook as well. So this is our profit first fast track. Uh, it's a great program. People are seeing a lot of success going through this and it is yours for just one time payment of $3,000 or three monthly payments of $1,100. That gets you through the whole program. That gives you that peace of mind um, that you know what you're doing and you have a plan to get there. So if you feel that Profit First Fast Track is for you, if you're ready to start taking your Profit First and ready to take your business to the next level, then all you have to do is click on this QR code or get your phones, take the QR code, take that link, and then go and sign up. That'll just send an email over to us. You no commitment at this point. Just let's jump on a Zoom call. Let's have a conversation. And uh, let's just talk through if this is the right step for you as well. I've spoken to people and it's not the right time for them. So, you know, it's, it's a call to figure out if this is the right time for you, maybe we need to wait, maybe we need to get going right now and we can have a conversation to figure that out. So we're also gonna put the link into the comment box on Facebook and we'll put it into the chat boxes here. And so that was the end of the presentation. I thank you for joining us today. I'm um, gonna to stop the live stream in just a second so that we can take question and uh, do a Q&A session with our um, people that are on the Zoom call. Um, but thank you for listening. My name is Kerry Postal. I have the privilege of owning Abacus Business Solutions and helping people take their profit first. So if you have been watching us on Facebook, thank you so much. Okay, you can stop the recording, Mabby.